But if reaching Alpha Centauri A didn't have to take thousands of years? Forget Project Starshot's leisurely pace. We're diving into revolutionary concepts, from warp drives to exotic matter, that could drastically cut interstellar travel time. Could humanity truly touch another star within our lifetime? Alpha Centauri A is close enough to feel almost reachable and at the same time absurdly distant. It sits just over four light years away, shining as one of the components of the Alpha Centauri system, the closest group of stars to the Sun. If there are habitable worlds around a Sun-like star anywhere beyond our own system, Alpha Centauri A is one of the best candidates. It is similar in mass, temperature, and luminosity to our Sun, and that makes it irresistibly tempting. If we could send a probe there and get real images, real spectra, real weather data from an exoplanet orbiting a star so familiar, it would completely change our place in the cosmos. The problem is that, with the tools we have today, Alpha Centauri might as well be another galaxy. That is where Breakthrough Starshot comes in. The project proposes launching gram-scale star chips attached to ultra-thin light sails and pushing them to around 20% of the speed of light using powerful ground-based lasers. On paper, that's incredible. At that speed, a probe could cross the four light years to Alpha Centauri in about 20 years. But there are two big catches. First, this is just the cruise time. We still need decades of development before the first launch, and then decades more waiting for the data to arrive back on Earth. Second, the payload is microscopic. We are talking about a few grams of electronics trying to survive a 0.2 C journey through interstellar dust with extremely limited power, instrumentation, and communication capabilities. Starshot is a huge leap beyond chemical rockets, but if our goal is to explore Alpha Centauri A in a way that truly feels like an interstellar mission, within a human lifetime, we need to go further than this single idea. So the question becomes, what lies beyond Starshot? How could future interstellar probes reach Alpha Centauri sooner, with more capable instruments, without waiting centuries? To even attempt an answer, we need to push right up to the edge of known physics. For most of the 20th century, interstellar travel was imagined as a straight line. Build a faster rocket, burn more fuel, accelerate longer. But relativity places a hard cap on how fast you can go, and conventional propulsion runs into a wall of diminishing returns. That is why some physicists began to ask a different question. Instead of moving faster through space-time, could we bend space-time itself? This is where the idea of warp drives enters the picture. In 1994, Miguel Alcubierre proposed a solution to Einstein's equations that looked, mathematically, like a warp bubble, a small region of space-time that contracts in front of a spacecraft and expands behind it. Inside this bubble, the ship could remain at rest relative to the local space-time, while the bubble itself rides a wave through the universe effectively allowing apparent faster-than-light travel without technically violating relativity. Since then, other physicists have refined and reworked the concept, looking for ways to reduce the absurd initial energy requirements. Even in the more optimistic models, though, the energy needed is still on the scale of entire planets or stars, and the bubble demands exotic configurations of space-time that we do not know how to create. Closely related to warp drives are wormholes, hypothetical tunnels connecting distant regions of space-time. In theory, if you could stabilize the throat of a wormhole, you could enter near the Sun and exit near Alpha Centauri, turning a four-light-year journey into a short passage. Both warp drives and traversable wormholes require something that does not exist in any known bulk form. Negative energy, or exotic matter with unusual gravitational properties. Tiny amounts of negative energy appear in quantum field theory under specific conditions, but nothing remotely close to what would be needed to hold a macroscopic wormhole open or sustain a warp bubble. That leaves these concepts in a strange place. They are not pure science fiction because they emerge from real equations, but they are far beyond any technology we can foresee in the next few decades. 
Even if we never build a true warp drive, exploring these extreme ideas might still inspire more practical advances. When physicists tried to lower the energy requirements of the Alcubierre drive, for example, they were forced to think carefully about how space-time curvature and energy density interact. That kind of deep theoretical work can trickle down into better understanding of gravity, quantum fields, and high-energy astrophysics. But relying on a hypothetical warp bubble to reach Alpha Centauri by 2100 would be too big a gamble. Instead, we might combine ambitious but still subluminal propulsion with radical new mission architectures to cheat time in a different way. One of the oldest ideas is the generation ship, a large self-contained vessel where several generations of humans live and die during a journey that could last centuries or even millennia. For Alpha Centauri A, this sounds excessive, but for more distant targets, it might be the only option if we stay below a few percent of light speed. A more realistic near-term variation uses suspended animation or long-term hibernation. If we could safely slow down human metabolism for decades, an interstellar crew could leave the solar system, sleep through the long cruise, and wake up near Alpha Centauri A. This does not bend space-time, but it bends our perception of time. From the crew's perspective, the journey would feel almost instantaneous, even if many years pass externally. There is another approach that removes humans entirely and puts evolution in charge. Self-replicating probes, also known as von Neumann machines. In this scenario, we send a small number of sophisticated robotic probes to nearby star systems. When they arrive, they mine local asteroids or moons, build copies of themselves, and spread onwards, star by star. Because each new generation multiplies, the network grows like a cosmic infection, potentially mapping the entire galaxy in a few million years. For Alpha Centauri A, a self-replicating probe could set up a permanent presence in the system build more advanced instruments over time, and beam back a constant stream of data. The challenge here is not physics, but control. How do you guarantee that a self-replicating machine does exactly what you want and never mutates into something dangerous? A third concept is to turn the galaxy itself into part of the propulsion system. The interstellar highway idea imagines a carefully planned route that uses gravitational assists from stars, brown dwarfs, and even black holes to accelerate probes without expending much fuel. We already do this inside the solar system, using planetary flybys to boost spacecraft toward Jupiter or Saturn. Scale this up, and you could, in principle, Design a network of trajectories where a probe leaving the sun uses multiple stellar flybys to gradually increase its speed. Unfortunately, there are not many massive objects conveniently located between us and Alpha Centauri A. So, the first leg of this journey would still rely heavily on powerful propulsion. But once you have a fast probe out there, you could use its path as part of a wider network, sending future probes to intercept refuel, or piggyback on its trajectory. All of these architectures run into the same brutal obstacle, engineering. To move beyond Starshot, we need to handle energies that today belong more to science fiction than to space agencies. Even accelerating a kilogram scale probe to a significant fraction of light speed requires energies comparable to nuclear weapons. Scaling that up to ton-scale payloads or full spacecraft demands power systems far beyond chemical rockets or even today's nuclear reactors. We might need fusion engines, antimatter catalyzed drives, or enormous laser arrays in space powered by swarms of solar collectors. Each of these options raises questions about how to generate, store, and direct such colossal energy without destroying the very probe we are trying to launch. Then there is the problem of materials. At 10% or 20% of the speed of light, individual atoms of interstellar gas and tiny dust grains become dangerous projectiles. A single grain of sand hitting the spacecraft could release energy comparable to a small explosive. The hull, the shielding, and the sail if we use one, must be made of materials that are incredibly strong, heat-resistant, and lightweight. 
we are already experimenting with graphene, metamaterials, and advanced ceramics. But nothing we have today has been proven to survive decades at relativistic speeds in the real interstellar medium. On top of that, intense radiation from cosmic rays and nearby stars will slowly degrade electronics, sensors, and even structural components. Designing an interstellar probe means designing a machine that can endure continuous punishment for decades without human intervention. Miniaturization and autonomy will be just as critical. One of the reasons breakthrough starshot bets on gram-scale probes is that smaller payloads are easier to accelerate. But shrinking everything creates a new set of challenges. How do you fit a high-gain antenna, a reliable power source, radiation shielding, navigation systems, and scientific instruments into something that weighs less than a sheet of paper? Advances in nanotechnology, quantum sensors, and ultra-efficient computing could help. But the bigger challenge is software. A probe heading to Alpha Centauri cannot wait for instructions every time something unexpected happens. By the time a signal from Earth arrives, years will have passed. The probe must be able to navigate, repair itself, prioritize science targets, and even redesign its own mission on the fly. That requires levels of onboard artificial intelligence, fault tolerance, and redundancy that we are only beginning to explore. If we do overcome these engineering barriers, a new question emerges. Should we rush to become an interstellar species, or proceed with extreme caution? Sending our first probes toward Alpha Centauri will be more than just a technical achievement. It will be a statement about who we are as a civilization. On one hand, there is the inspirational vision of humanity as a species that refuses to be confined to a single star. On the other, there are ethical concerns about contaminating other planetary systems, even with non-biological machines, and about the long-term consequences of seeding self-replicating technology in the galaxy. There is also a social dimension. Who decides which star we visit first, what we send, and what kind of data we prioritize? This is where the mindset shift becomes important. Breakthrough Starshot represents a specific, well-defined project. Get a tiny probe to Alpha Centauri at 0.2 C using lasers and light sails. To move beyond that, we might need something like a breakthrough interstellar mentality. Not a single proposal, but a framework that encourages many competing ideas, from warp-inspired metrics to nuclear fusion drives, from hibernation-ready crewed ships to elaborate autonomous probe swarms. Rather than betting everything on one technology, we explore a portfolio of interstellar strategies, accepting that some will fail, some will stay on paper, and a few might push us closer to the stars. The key is to create an environment where radical yet physically grounded ideas can be tested, funded, and refined over decades. So what would have to change between now and 2050 for interstellar probes beyond Starshot to become more than just PowerPoint concepts? We would likely need at least three breakthroughs. First, a revolution in energy generation and storage, perhaps through practical fusion reactors or massive space-based solar power systems, to supply the enormous power needed for high-velocity launches. Second, a new class of materials and shielding techniques capable of protecting spacecraft at relativistic speeds for decades. And third, dramatically more advanced autonomous systems and miniaturization, allowing probes to think, adapt, and survive far from any human help. None of these breakthroughs is guaranteed, but progress in each of these areas would ripple across many other fields, making the journey to Alpha Centauri a, a side effect of a much broader technological transformation. Until then, projects like Breakthrough Starshot remain crucial first steps. They force us to confront the reality of interstellar distances and to start building the tools we will eventually need. The light sails, the laser arrays, the ultralight electronics, the autonomy algorithms. All of these will feed into the next generation of missions, even if Starshot itself never launches exactly as envisioned. Alpha Centauri A will still be there, 
shining steadily in the southern sky, waiting for the day when the faint signal of a human-made probe finally arrives in its orbit and whispers back across the void. If you want to follow this journey from the very first experiments with light sails all the way to the moment we finally touch another star, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and share this video with someone who loves thinking far beyond our solar system. The more people take an interest in this kind of science, the sooner we will have the reasons and resources to turn these ideas into reality. Thank you, and see you in the next video.